great variety of aquatic life in here. There's over 42 different species of fish. Uh, there's three different species of turtle, and uh, we've got mainly freshwater crocodiles in here. In Jawan language, freshwater crocodiles are uh, called Goyen Ba. They're also known as the Johnson River Crocodile. They can grow to 3.5 metres, 2.5 to 3 metres for a female. When they're at that 2.5 to 3 metre mark, they sit at about 50 to 60 years of age. They've got a decent lifespan, they can live up to 100. Uh, you can live with, well you can swim with freshwater crocodiles. Uh, they can't possibly eat us. This is because of their jaw structure. They've got a long, narrow, skinny jaw structure, very fine, thin, fragile teeth. They can only really eat what they can swallow whole. This is why 60% of a freshwater crocodile's diet consists of insects. The other 40% are coral snakes, fish, water birds, and occasionally the very, very small wallaby that comes down to the river to get a drink of water. The only time a freshwater crocodile would attack a person is if that person physically tried to touch that freshwater crocodile. So if you saw it laying up on a sandy bank, you went up, gave it a hug, kiss, pat, try and take a selfie with it, it's probably going to bite you. <laughs> probably not the brightest thing to do, hey. What you do is keep your distance, take a few photos and make your way on. Well, that's what most normal people do anyway. Freshwater crocodiles will lay their eggs on the beautiful sandy beaches that you've seen throughout the gorge. And they'll lay their eggs about 18 to 20 centimetres into the sand. About 20 to 30 eggs in each hole. If we went up onto those sandy beaches during nesting time, one of our footprints could possibly wipe out the entire nest. Uh, in about two weeks' time, you'll see signs on all the beaches that say, do not enter, crocodile nesting. And it's very important that we stay off the beaches because the female freshwater crocodile, she does not guard her nest, so the eggs become vulnerable. So we don't need to contribute, they've got a pretty bad survival rate. You've got birds like your peregrine falcons, hawks, ospreys, black kites. They'll eat the eggs. You've also got crows, water monitors, sand monitors, goannas and snakes that eat the eggs also. So let's just say she lays 20 eggs. Out of the 20 eggs, maybe only 8 will hatch. Out of the 8 that hatch, maybe only 4 will make it to the river. When they get to the river, this is their only interaction that they have with their mother when they enter the river. She'll either do two things, leave them on their own to fend for themselves, or she'll eat them. So out of the four that made it to the river, maybe only one or two survive. Not a great start to life, eh? Hey? Possibly be slapped with a $45,000 fine. The reason why it's so expensive, we used to have about 500 freshwater crocodiles in the gorge system. But since the cane toad had been introduced to the Northern Territory a while back, they've had a dramatic impact on the population of our crocodiles. We've only got about 150 to 200 left. Slowly building in numbers though. The sex of a freshwater crocodile is also determined by the temperature of the sand in that three month incubation period. 28 to 30 degrees, when the eggs hatch they will be female. 30 to 32 degrees, when the eggs hatch they'll be a mixture. Half the eggs will be male, half the eggs will be female. 32 to 34 degrees, when the eggs hatch they will be male. Anything over they will not survive. Saltwater crocodiles can make their way into river systems like this. It's usually during the wet season uh, when the rivers over all the natural rock barriers. It's just one whole gorge in the wet because all the gorges stay up into river systems like this to feed. Like I said, we've got a great variety of aquatic life that inhabits the gorge, so plenty of fish, turtle, and crocodile for them to eat. So, yes, your saltwater crocodiles, they will also eat your freshies. Of course, though, this is fresh water. They are saltwater crocodiles. This is not the natural or preferred habitat for them. So eventually, after they've been feeding, most of them will usually turn around and make their way back out towards the sea. It does get a bit tricky for them, though, to get out of the gorge system in that short period of time that they've been feeding because in that two months, we've just gone from our wet season back to our dry season. The rivers drop back under the natural rock barriers, and the rock barriers act like dams trapping the saltwater crocodiles into the separate gorges. So after every wet season, we have to do about three months worth of surveys on the river. So day and night croc spots driving boats up the river. Uh, we also fly helicopters into the gorge system, but we'll place traps in the separate gorges as well. One of those traps, it's coming up on the right hand side, it's usually made with a part of an animal. 
or let the pig or buffalo. We'll take them out of the river completely, we'll take them back to their natural and preferred habitat. But if they're big enough, uh, we have to take them to either a zoo or a crocodile farm. After we finish our surveys on the river and we know for a fact that it's safe to go swimming, we'll open up this river for swimming and canoeing. So if you ever get the, come, ever get the chance to come back, uh, canoe the river, highly recommended. We've got one of the best crocodile management programs in the country. Nobody has ever been taken by a saltwater crocodile here at Nipawak National Park. We work in partnership with not only parks and wildlife, but Jarwin Rangers as well and uh, they're the best people to have around because their ancestors have lived off these lands for many years. They know all about this place. And I think they've got a really great partnership with Parks and Wildlife.